We know the fact that there are four variables in a two port network i1, i2, v1 and v2 and out of these four variables only two variables are independent and the remaining two variables will depend on these two independent variables and let's say i1 and i2 are the two independent variables i will write down this point current i1 which is the current at input port and current i2 which is the current at output port are the two independent variables we are having in our two port network and the remaining two variables v1 and v2 are the dependent variables v1 is the voltage at port number one which is the input port and v2 is the voltage at port number two which is the output port and the two voltages are the dependent variables in our two port network this means v1 will depend on both i1 and i2 therefore we can say that v1 is the function of both current i1 and current i2 similarly v2 will depend on both i1 and i2 therefore v2 is also the function of i1 and i2 from here we can have two equations we can say that v1 will depend on current i1 according to a parameter z11 and also v1 will depend on current i2 but according to a parameter z12 so finally v1 will be equal to z11 i1 plus z12 i2 let's say this is equation number one now following the same process we can say that voltage v2 is equal to z21 i1 plus z22 i2 and let's say this is equation number two and we can write one matrix form from these two equations we can say that there is a 2 by 1 matrix having the elements v1 and v2 and this matrix is equal to the product of two matrices out of which the first matrix is 2 by 2 matrix having the elements z11 z12 z21 z22 and the second matrix is 2 by 1 matrix having the elements i1 and i2 so this is the matrix form and from here we will have this 2 by 2 matrix which is known as the impedance matrix it is known as the impedance matrix and i hope you understand how we have written this matrix multiplied to this matrix equal to this matrix from these two equations if you know the matrix multiplication you can easily find out v1 is equal to z11 multiplied to i1 plus z12 multiplied to i2 and v2 is equal to z21 multiplied to i1 plus z22 multiplied to i2 and from the equivalence of two matrices you will have these two equations now moving on to the remaining two matrices this matrix we call voltage matrix it is the voltage matrix and this matrix is known as the current matrix 
Now we will focus on the elements in the impedance matrix. Let's say the impedance matrix is represented by this, the voltage matrix is represented by this and the current matrix is represented by this. So we can say that the voltage matrix is equal to the impedance matrix multiplied to the current matrix and the impedance matrix is having four elements first element is z11 z11 and from equation number one we can have z11 z11 will be equal to v1 divided by i1 when i2 is equal to zero so z11 is equal to v1 divided by i1 when current i2 is equal to 0. This means v1 divided by i1 when port 2 is open circuited we will have z11. Now it is important to understand how we can name this particular parameter. The first thing we can notice is that I2 is equal to 0. This implies port number 2 that is the output port is open circuited. Therefore, we will write open circuit and then we can see that Z11 is equal to V1 divided by I1. V1 divided by I1 is the impedance voltage divided by current is the impedance and it is the impedance of the input side therefore we will call it input impedance and also you can see that this is the impedance of port number one and the impedance of one port is known as driving point impedance so finally we can say that we have open circuit driving point input impedance so this is the complete name of z11 there is nothing to mug up here you simply have to stick with the basics now we will find out z21 we can have z21 from equation number two when i2 is equal to zero when i2 is equal to zero z21 will be equal to v2 divided by i1 so z21 is equal to voltage v2 divided by i1 when current i2 is equal to zero this means v2 by i1 when port number two is open circuited so now we will name down z21 Z21 will be open circuit because I2 is 0 that means port 2 is open circuited and then you can see that it is equal to V2 divided by I1. So again we have voltage divided by current that means we have impedance. Now the impedance is forward transfer impedance. The impedance is forward transfer impedance why forward transfer impedance because we have voltage of the port number two divided by the current of port number one so here we have the parameter of output divided by the parameter of input therefore we will use the term forward transfer if we have the parameter of input divided by the parameter of output we will use the term reverse transfer now we will find out z12 and we can have it from equation number one z12 will be equal to v1 divided by i2 when i1 is equal to zero so z12 is equal to voltage v1 divided by current i2 when current i1 is equal to zero this means 
z12 will be equal to v1 divided by i2 when the input port is open circuited therefore we will call it open circuit reverse transfer impedance it is impedance because we have voltage divided by current and it is reverse transfer impedance because we have the parameter of input divided by the parameter of output so it is reverse transfer impedance so this is the name of parameter z12 now one more parameter is left and it is z22 now finding out z22 and naming it is the homework for you once you have your answer post it in comment section so this is all for the parameters we are having and you can see that all the parameters we have are impedances and therefore we call them impedance parameters or z parameters and you can notice one thing z parameters are obtained by open circuiting either the input port or the output port and therefore we call these parameters open circuit impedance parameters or simply or simply open circuit parameters so there are three names for these four parameters z parameters impedance parameters and open circuit parameters now we will move on to the final discussion of this lecture in which we will implement the network and we will implement the network using the two equations we are having from the equation number one we have voltage v1 minus z11 i1 minus z12 i2 equal to zero so here we have one kvl equation and we will use this KVL equation to get one portion of our network you can see that we have V1 this means we have the potential difference of V1 we have the potential difference of V1 then we have one impedance Z11 through which current is I1 current is I1 through impedance Z11 then we have one dependent voltage source and the dependent voltage source is depending on current i2 so this is the dependent voltage source and it is depending on current i2 and its value is z12 i2 now from equation number two we will have voltage v2 minus z21 i1 minus z22 i2 equal to zero so again we have one kvl equation and from here we will have the potential difference of v2 then current i2 entering the impedance z22 then we have one dependent voltage source depending on current i1 so this is the dependent voltage source giving us z21 i1 so this is our final network and i request you to remember these two equations because they will help you a lot in the coming lectures don't forget to solve the homework problem and now i will end this lecture here see you in the next one